Hey guys, I'm Vicky. Today I'm going to be talking about how to keep babies and toddlers cool in hot weather, both at night so they can get a good night's sleep and in the day so that you can protect their skin from the sun. So we have a heat wave in the UK at the moment, so I thought it was quite good timing to shoot this video. It's going to get up to 33, possibly 34C this week at some point. Now, I realise that in some countries 33, 34 degrees is like nothing, but to me, like... I, I just can't cope with it. Anything above about 25, 26, and I just go a little bit loopy. I just can't, can't handle the heat. Now I know like I'm British, so therefore I should just be grateful for any shred of sun that the sun gods like deem to give us. And I should just like be out there like standing in the sun's rays until I turn lobster red and like worshiping it um, until like the very last sliver of light has gone away with the sunset. But I just don't like it. I'm sorry. I just don't like it when it's this hot. I can't do anything. I feel really stuck and trapped in the house because it's so hot. I feel like I can't really be very um, productive around the house because I feel too hot. It's just too hot. I'm sorry, but it is. 25 degrees maximum, that's all I want. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about keeping babies and toddlers safe during the daytime in the sun. So the best thing you can do for your child is to just cover as much of their skin as possible with very light clothing. Now, the temptation might be to have your child running around naked in the back garden, which obviously is absolutely fine for a little while, you know, we shouldn't be afraid to do that, but um, in general, your child's skin is very, very delicate. There's only so much that sun cream can do. The very best and the most reliable protection is to cover that skin as much as possible. So get t-shirts that cover the shoulders because these are the places that catch the sun the most. Get them sun hats that will cover their ears and if your kids are anything like mine, um, when they were babies, they were really, really bald. So yeah, you need a hat on there to protect that very delicate scalp. Um, wearing shorts, things like that, that will protect the tops of their legs. Obviously, if you do want to let your child run around in the buff for a little while, then you know, have Hey, do it like it's summer it's meant to be fun but do make sure that you put sun cream on them now talking about sun cream this is my next tip and this is a really important one that people often miss and I was totally unaware of it until a couple of years ago so when you're shopping for sun cream this is something that you really need to keep an eye out for so when most people are shopping for sun cream they look at the SPF and they base their decision on that and probably also on the brand so this is a sun protect by Sainsbury's so often you'll look at something and you'll see ah uh, it's Nivea Ah, uh, it's Ambre Solaire. Like, I recognise those brands, I trust them, it says it's kids safe, brilliant, that will be perfect. But there is one other thing that you need to look at, and this is really important, it's the UVA star rating. And this is to do with the protection that the sun cream gives from other types of rays. So the SPF is important, but the star rating is important too. It goes up to five stars. This is a five star sun cream some of the major brands are only two or three which is not good enough you want a minimum four star brand i'm not going to get too scientific on this but it's basically to do with different types of sun rays and the degree of protection that the sun cream offers from those different types of rays it is very important to have a four or five star rating for your child so do keep an eye out for that star rating it is super important and it's probably something that you may have overlooked maybe you haven't but it's worth bearing in mind whenever shopping for any sun cream. This is a Sainsbury's own, it's a lot cheaper than some of the other bigger brands out there and it's five star with a 30 SPF, so it's kind of perfect. For babies, you wanna be looking at a minimum SPF of 30, ideally a 50. Now on the subject of sun cream, and the sun and being safe in the sun obviously it's really important to protect yourself and your child from burning but the sun is also really really good for you your skin absorbs vitamin d from the sun's rays so it's actually good for your child to have at least a little bit of time every day in the sun without sun cream i know it's so confusing isn't it like we're told protect their sun skin from the sun but they need some sun because it's good for them. Arr, that's just parenthood. That's modern parenthood, like summed up in one like confusing, conflicting ball of advice right there. But yeah, if you can give them like say 20 minutes to half an hour in the sun without sun cream on, then it's gonna do them a lot of good. Now I'm talking about UK temperatures. I'm not talking about in the middle of the Sahara Desert where like obviously the sun is much more intense. But I'm talking about first thing in the morning when you've just gone out, giving them a little bit of time in the sun without sun cream on is actually really, really good for them then pop the sun cream on and you're good to go
My next tip then is to try and avoid the sun's rays at lunchtime when it's at its most intense. That's from about, what, like half 11 till about half one, two o'clock, something like that. If you are out with a baby, as I said before, covering the skin is best shade is best so find a shady spot with your baby or you can always buy if you're down at the beach you can buy one of these um specific uva protection tents which you can set up your baby can sit in with all their toys you can still keep an eye on them they're still playing on the beach but they're nice and safe with a little bit of shade otherwise you can just get a parasol just anything that gives your baby a little bit of protection from the sun while we are on the subject of babies and shade a lot of people are tempted during sunny times to cover their baby's buggy with a blanket um, I realise why this is tempting because seeing your baby getting like a face full of sun and like not being able to see is like really, it seems really awful and you're like oh god they're getting a face full of sun, they're burning, they can't see, they can't sleep because their eyes are just glowing red. However, if you put a blanket over your baby's buggy, it is just going to heat up the inside of the buggy. It can be really, really dangerous. The reason is that although you've covered them up and they're in shade, the inside of the buggy is heating up. It can get up to like, you know, 30 degrees plus in there. That's not safe for your baby. So please, please, please do not cover the stroller with a blanket. If you do want to give them a little bit more shade while they're in the buggy, you can get parasols that attach to the side of the buggy and you can angle them around to give them a little bit more shade you can get other specific products that will fit to your buggy just to get that little bit of shade and the other thing is to maybe just avoid the sun during particular times of day so that you can keep your child protected from it but please 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 don't put a blanket over your baby's buggy because it does just heat them up really really fast and that can be very dangerous my next tip is if it's a really hot day you've got no air conditioning you're all sweltering it can be a good idea just to get a paddling pool out and let your child have a little paddle around if you don't have a paddling pool then get some saucepans, fill them up with water, let them just, or like a bucket, whatever you have, and let them just sit next to it and splash around with their hands. That kind of thing will cool them right down. You could get ice cubes and pop them into a bucket and let them play with those, fill those in their hands, that will cool them down too. You could even put food dye in the ice cubes to make them lots of different colors, which will make it really fun, and that's a bit more of a sensory play experience for them, so that's really fun too. If your baby is very young and they're breastfeeding, you could freeze some breast milk and make some ice lollies for them if your baby is a little bit older and they're weaning you could make your own ice lollies out of things like orange juice or you could pulp up some fruit like strawberries and freeze that and let them munch on that anything like that is not only great for teething but it's also going to help just cool them down and make them feel a little bit more comfortable and just a bog standard wet flannel like cool wet flannel dabbed all over them that will help as well okay so moving on to night time this is an absolute nightmare for getting sleep I find when you have a baby at night time it's hot they just won't go to sleep you know they're uncomfortable you're uncomfortable and they want to be held and comforted because they're not feeling great and you just end up a big sweaty mess it's just bleh, it's just horrible so in order to help your baby to sleep at night first thing you want to do strip them right down to their nappy to go to bed try and keep the room cool during the day so that when they do go to bed it's not you know a sauna in there um, it's as comfortable as you can make it so on really hot days where you're getting up to 30 degrees shut the windows to keep the heat out if you're baby's bedroom is facing the sun at any point close the curtains to keep the sun's rays out because that's going to heat the room up too if you have a room thermometer that can really help you just to monitor the temperature and give you an idea of you know when it's getting really too hot so a grow egg will say that the ideal temperature is between 16 and 20 degrees once it goes up to 20 degrees it goes orange now i think once it's above 24 degrees it gets it goes red and it gets a digital sad face um so keep an eye out for that if you do have a grow egg but yeah, anything above 24 degrees is generally considered to be uncomfortable um, for your baby and you need to take a bit of action just to strip them down and make sure that they're in appropriate clothing for going to sleep. So at about 24 degrees, you might just want to put your baby down in a vest and in a 0.5 tog sleeping bag. If you are really worried about them overheating in the night, then you could just pop a very very thin blanket on them i often use the large muslins um which i get from aiden and as but you can get all sorts of different ones like the swaddle muslins and just draped it on top of my kids and that was generally enough to keep them warm you know babies 
and toddlers do like to have something over them which I think is kind of similar it's the same as adults really you like to feel a little bit covered at night um, and those are thin and breathable and they're hopefully not going to heat up too much in them if you have a fan in the room that is great for cooling down the room obviously some fans only circulate warm air around the room I'm a big fan of the tower fans that you can get I know they take up way more space but I just find that they actually do cool the room a bit whereas the sort of big dish type fans that just were round and round they just don't seem to cool me down I don't know if you find that but I'm yeah as I say I'm a huge fan of the tower fans when you put your baby to bed try not to have the fan pointing directly at them because they will particularly with very young babies they will cool down very very rapidly if they're in a direct draft so angle the fan away from them but have it fairly close-ish, so it's a bit of a balancing act, um, so that you can just try and just cool the room a little bit down overnight, and maybe put the fan on a timer so it only stays on for about an hour or so, just so your baby can get to sleep in comfort. During really hot weather, your baby is going to be thirstier, which possibly means more night feeds. So try and tank your baby up um, during the last feed at night. Consider adding a dream feed as well, if you don't already do a dream feed, just to make sure that they can really rehydrate and if they do sweat a lot at night, it's not going to be, you know, causing them too much of a problem. Make sure they're nice and hydrated throughout the day. Give them a super big feed at night. And if they do want to feed extra overnight, which they may well do, they may well wake up a little bit more no matter what you do. Let them feed as much as they want to feed. And remember that it's just a phase. It's just because of the hot weather. It will pass. And if your child was sleeping through before, they will go back to sleeping through again afterwards. If all else fails and your baby's bedroom is the hottest room in the entire house, then your last resort is to move the bed somewhere else. So what you could do is move it downstairs. That's gonna be the coolest place of the house. Um, often I find that our downstairs is like four or five degrees cooler than upstairs. So move them downstairs, obviously make sure the room is safe, make sure the environment is safe, but you may well find that they'll get a much better night's sleep if you shift them to a cooler room. With your baby's bedtime bath, try and make the water cool, but don't make it icy cold. Icy cold water will cause the body to try and warm itself up, so your baby's body will start working harder to warm up and it will be counterproductive to what you're trying to do. So make the bath water kind of lukewarm so that they cool down, but they're not like shocked by the freezing cold. Similarly, you can use a cold flannel just to dab on them as you're trying to settle them off to sleep, to keep them nice and cool. If you're finding you're both getting really sweaty while breastfeeding, um, maybe, yeah, nice cool flannel just to dab on them, just to keep yourself and them cool and to dab on them when they're settling in bed, if they're wriggling around and fidgeting a bit, you can just gently sort of mop their brow a little bit with the fa uh, flannel and that might help to cool them down a little bit. Hey guys, I really, really hope you found these tips useful. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please hit subscribe for more parenting, cleaning, organizing, and lifestyle videos. Thanks guys, take care, bye.